Yo, how's it going? Uh, happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. Uh, BH Brewing here, outside in the backyard, because uh, it's springtime now. Happy spring, everybody. And let's give you a look here. Here's the, uh, here's the hot boxes I did last year. And if we move away, we got hops sprouting. So that's a good deal. It, uh, it's gonna be that time. You can see over here we still got some snow on the ground. So we still have some spring storms happening. Uh, the snow is from last Saturday, which we got about six, eight inches, and that uh, melts right away, and we're back in the 60s. So that's what the weather's like here in Colorado, but uh, everything's all good. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys a little shot here and uh, let you know that the, the hops are starting to sprout, so it's springtime. So let's go inside. I'll give you guys uh, an update on the keyser, which is done. All right, here's the keys are all six taps are on, ready to go. I only have two beers um, charged right now though, so I'll be brewing here very soon. But this is one thing that's nice about having a keyser is you can pour stuff one-handed. Now, you don't have to have two hands. We'll just do a little bit there so I don't dump it. But uh, right there, that's, that's an oatmeal stout that I did and uh, yeah I love these Perlex taps and I saw the video on Jake CPU nuts flow control and I am going to be getting a couple of those for at least two of these so that uh, like he was saying if you want to feel growlers or any of that because I'm gonna hopefully start uh, be brewing a bunch and giving you know giving five gallons or so to my friends and keeping five gallons here so that's where we're at this is a uh, like I said an oatmeal stout I don't know if any of you guys entered into the national homebrew conference um, competition but uh, this is one I entered so we'll see what happens it gets judged next month uh, so cheers Ah, good. Let me show you inside the uh, keyser here. So, that's a yeast thing right there if you guys are wondering, but I just have five kegs sitting in here. The big CO2 tank, it's a 20 pound. Um, I can move it if I need to, but I'm probably going to run five kegs in here for right now instead of the sixth. Um, but, one item I want to show you guys is I wanted to do kind of an experiment and I ran regular lines which I just took you can see this one goes here comes around and it's here this is the same length as what a regular picnic tap is and I just wanted to see what the difference is with running a shorter length and I had hooked one up to the stout one that I had and it came out so fast, it was nothing but foam, and it would just fill the glass um, with foam. There was hardly, you know, any any beer to it. So what I ended up doing is, like everybody tells you, you need to go to 10-foot lines. So if you can, let's see if I can pull it up here. You can see I got 10 feet of line, and then I just twisted it, put a zip tie on it, and then I put it against the wall of the chest freezer and then I put the keg against it because the, the wall is the coldest part and it seems to uh, have done a good job on that. So 10 foot line minimum on it, same thing with this one here. I got a uh, English bitter on there. You can see the light turned on, the keys are turned on since the lid's open but I have no, no air leaks everything is is turned out really well um, the freezer itself only turns on really if I lift the lid or maybe maybe once sometimes twice an hour it turns on but uh, there's the there's the faucets there and then the, the 
Johnson controller on the side here. I just put Vel I put Velcro, heavy duty Velcro against there, and heavy duty Velcro on the Johnson controller, and then I just stuck it to it, and it's tucked away, nice out of the way, but it's still accessible. I can look at the temp, um, totally right there. So that turned out really nice. Uh, what else? Not much else happening. Uh, I kind of been screwed up the last couple of months or whatever with work schedule and had some some stuff coming up and it's been crazy. It's not been uh, it's not been very easy the last couple months. Um, hence why I only have two beers on tap out of six taps. Um, but I will be brewing. Uh, second week of April with DJ the Chef. So that will be good. That will be fun. And I need to PM SJ Poor tonight. I just got done talking to uh, DJ and we're going to do a beer together for the challenge. So him and I are going to come up with the recipe here pretty soon and we'll do the, the beer together and we'll send it out. But I will PM you tonight. Sorry for the delay. Like I said, I haven't had time really to watch a whole ton of videos. Um, but yeah, that's just what it's been. And uh, things are things are good. Good beer. Hope everybody's doing good. And uh, I will definitely get some footage when DJ and I brew, and we'll get that posted to you guys. Um, been looking at a lot of you guys' setups, and man, they're totally awesome out there. So, happy Homebrew Wednesday, and uh, we'll tell you guys soon. Cheers. Hey guys, little bonus footage for you here. Um, I was watching a video earlier, and there's a guy with a channel, HK Studio Inc. HK Studio Inc. He was talking about a his kegerator that he had and that uh, he had written on the front of it and he couldn't it was in permanent marker and he couldn't get it off so I'm down in my kids playroom here and I want to show you a very cool little trick that you can do if you have a problem like that so let me flip the camera around um, here's their little whiteboard here that they draw on I'll show you this so this is a sharpie permanent marker I'll just write on here for you. HK for HK Studio. So that's written on their little whiteboard there. I'm just putting the lid on. And then I'll let it dry here for a sec. You can see, smearing it with my finger, nothing comes off. If you just take, so this is an Expo brand, but it's a dry erase marker. Very cool trick. Take a dry erase marker over permanent marker. Just drew all over it. Let me put the lid back on. And now, I'll just take my finger. And it's gone away. So, you can do that on your refrigerator. And that should remove that permanent marker on there, hopefully. So... Nice quick tip in just a couple minutes, and uh, hopefully that helps you on your freezer or your refrigerator, or if you guys have permanent marker on something, just put a dry erase marker over it, wipes it right off. So, cheers.